photo or in sequence? I don't see a little less attitude. Why the freak is it doing that? Oh man, that's nice. Let's hope that wasn't the system just blowing up. Back in 2019, we spent the year building out our school. After the build was done, we sold our house and traveled for a full year. Following that year of travel, we started to crave building again and getting something 4x4. Four four. <laughs> Now, this box is big, but I'm hoping it's just a lot of packaging to keep it from getting all messed up, you know? That is my uh, hope and dreams. Whoa! So it's not a lot of packaging. <laughs> um, that thing's kind of a unit, huh? Do you want to pull the truck over and you can stand on it and hold it up? Yeah. How do you like it? It's actually not bad. Really gotta make sure this van's as top heavy as possible. <laughs> Most efficient is 22. This is a scale and it's a 19 out of 22 as a, on efficiency Ooh. for cooling. And then heating it's a 9.5 out of 10, which is probably why this is bigger too, because this is a heater as well. So it's an AC sure. and a heater. I'm gonna have to make a very strong support for that. Yeah. back unit and this will sit probably like that it looks great so me and i've been talking and i really like to do these like brainstorming things like i don't really like to build something like a van where there's so many components to it so much going into it just by like here's our plan get it all done and i mean that might be part of why it takes a while but i think it leads to a better thought out process and a more thought out home slash vehicle. We did this on the bus as well. So we kind of take a step back every once in a while. And for instance, say like, what should we do here? Do we like this style? Do we like this design? Do we like what we're doing? Now you might be getting nervous because I'm showing you the mini split. And basically where I'm getting at is we want to hook up the mini split right now. We're not taking it down. Don't worry. I mean, if you did want it taken down too bad. It's pretty hot. It's supposed to just keep getting hotter this weekend. We're in a heat wave right now. This mini split is a heater and AC, I believe. At least I keep saying it is. And I'd really like the inside of the van to be air conditioned while we're working on it because it is very hot. We want to pull this mini split down. I'm going to do the body work up there, get all the Bondo work done, all the prep, all of that. And then we are going to take, I believe black is the color right now. We might change that, but we're going to get some like a duplicate color cans which is like an automotive spray paint essentially and i've painted some front fenders with this and it turned out perfect like you can tell the difference between the original car paint dupli color like basically a stripe on the back here just where the mini split is covered so i don't know how heavy this thing is but it's wide enough for me to lift it with a struggle sand metal with almost regular sandpaper. This is 120 grit. So when I blend the welds down, I leave them a little proud and sand them down to make a perfect finish. is finishing up the bondo work this is the last bondo that he has to put on and then we will be taping and painting and we're going to be actually taping basically from the metal piece 
and up. We're gonna kind of like angle it and then tape on the other side and up and we're just painting that back fiberglass on the roof and we're not doing it the color of the van. We're not, we, we're not for sure even set on the color of the van so we're gonna be doing that black to match the black mini split. You can see all the pieces I have in here. That one over there. I didn't actually paint them in here but I just moved everything because I need to move the big unit onto the saw horses. If they sold a black one, we would have just bought the black one. I've never seen a black mini split unless it's painted, probably because it's AC and black attracts heat, but we're not gonna put some white big ass thing on the back of the van when that's not our style, that's not our vibe. So we're gonna paint it black and it should be fine. Okay, we're about to probably pack it up soon here. Um, everything is pretty much painted and then we can get it thrown together and hopefully up tomorrow morning. So we still need to do more clear with that. That's with a uh, dupli color and then this is a, a clear coat. It's a two part, it's kind of cool. You push this bottom piece here in the can and it mixes it and then you just kind of mix it up. And so it's supposed to be like an actual professional automotive uh, clear coat. So we have the dupli color on there and then just one coat of this here. And I believe, well, everything's in Spanish, so I need to brush up on my Spanish skills, but I believe we do. After this, we sand it a little bit and then spray again. I might be wrong. Everything will definitely get painted different color besides black though, like as far as the body goes. I need to make a tab for this for a mini split. That'll go on our, not our mini split, our, our uh, Wee, Wee boost. boost. And then we'll paint this as well. Get our mini split up there and Call it good. Get it all wired up, plumbed up, and start feeling the cool, cool air. Your hat right now is just ridiculous. It you looks like, like a it? taco. Yeah, that had fun. <laughs> we had actually painted all these components with a satin black, and after Painted. thinking about, yeah, so now it's gonna be glossy. I don't know what so we were better. thinking because we knew everything else is gonna be glossy. It looks so much better. Yes, 100%. Look at that shine. This was the component that we couldn't take apart. Could, the but whole... it, it would have been a lot of effort. Yeah, but now it's all gloss black. Yeah. It's really beautiful. Lance is working on a mount for the Wee Boost right now because that's going on where the mini split goes, so we need to get that up before. If you don't know what a Wee Boost is, it's basically a cell signal booster and it works amazing. We are it's, very happy with it. Yeah, it will bring like one bar up to three or four bars. We had one in the bus. And this morning, I'm going to put the AC unit back together. It's really smoky today and I feel like I'm getting a cold, but I'm sure it's just from the smoke. Holy, I look like a ghost. We can usually see mountains like right behind those trees and they're nowhere to be seen today. Bummer, bummer. Jesus. Anger issues. So pretty much anything we put up that needs to be sealed, I use this stuff, it's called butyl tape. And I put that on basically everything underneath the, these feet. And then I use silicone around or like self-leveling lap sealant as like a double, a double doer. And it seems to work pretty good exterior silicone they sell like special rv lap sealant and the blah 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 but it's always white i don't like white and from my experience this stuff works just the same and costs much less here is our certificate of warranty we'll hang this on the wall we'll frame it the plan is here's all this hose so you're gonna actually end up cutting the hose down. So this kit's cool. It's like a DIY kit. So it comes with a hose, a bunch of tape, like, I mean, everything you need. Wire, they do create condensation, so you have little condensation hoses. Little hose, as some might call them. So I'm gonna go through and read the instructions. We're gonna put the this unit up, paint should be dry. We're gonna actually use these little rubber feet. So that way, hopefully, it'll stop the rattle or anything like that. Did that come with it? Yeah, these okay. came with it. Just cut this piping down to the minimum length we could do, which was uh, nine meters. Nine foot and 10 inches. Or three meters, yeah. So nine foot, 10 point something inches. And the hose isn't actually charged. I believe that's the only thing that's charged. So we're gonna go to AutoZone and rent a vacuum pump. Uh, yeah, vacuum pump. Because what's recommended is after you hook this hose up, you 
you leave, there's like almost like garden valves, you leave them closed, hook up the vacuum pump to it and vacuum out the air in this line. And then you wait a little while, make sure it doesn't, the vacuum doesn't pull any air, meaning you have no leaks in there. So once we have no leaks, then you can, you open the system for five seconds and you'll hear gas go and you close it. Make sure the pressure doesn't drop uh, for a minute. And then once that happens, you open it all the way up and you're good. And then also side note, our friends message us, they said that their AC unit worked best when it was out of direct sunlight, aka meaning it works better when it's cooler and us painting it black probably won't obviously make it well, any we, cooler, but... We kind of knew that. We, yeah, we knew cool that going factor into it. is way worth more than 10 Plus, percent. this is so... Even our friend Vanessa, Lost in the Pines, I'll put them down below, but even she said this is probably so big and overpowered for how tiny of a space we're in anyways that it should be fine. I'm thinking of... Uh, because it is on the back of a vehicle and it recommends that it doesn't have strong winds go through it, I'm thinking of making like almost a little shroud. So when we're driving, well, it'll mainly be on top, almost like a spoiler. So that way air kind of goes away from it. And as well as protecting it from the sun, giving it shade. So that'll come further down the road though. You got it. We're so strong. Then your feet slowly stop getting on there more and more. That's so it. much better! So we're hanging the Wii Boost. I made this little mount just out of quarter inch, I think it is. Bent it up and then we'll just weld it. Definitely do the other side. I kind of like this side. No, I see the other side. Yeah, I like that. The top needs to go to the right. <coughs> oh wait, so have it where it's at? Is that where it's at right now? Top needs to go to the left a little more. To the right a bit more. Can see more? There. Okay, so that's perfectly straight? Yep. Okay, we went out, rented a vacuum pump. This is just an automotive one. It has these connections here. But for the vacuum side, it has the correct connection we need, which is kind of like a Schrader valve. So what I ended up doing is moving this piece to here and the piece that was here to here and then that one to here. So now we have it from the vacuum pump to here to here. And I'll turn this on and then you can kind of in here now. So that's what we need because of just the way the fittings work. So now it should work. So basically we just converted this from a automotive vacuum pump, vacuum manifold valves to a house manifold valve. And it's all rental. So we can take them back afterwards and not have to spend money. Lance is on the inside. We hadn't thrown bolts through the plate that was the inside of the main up yet. It's just temporarily in place with screws. So hopefully I can reach all of it without having to take the big back part of the main split off, um, but we'll see. Oh, it's so hot in there. Not for long. Let me see that impact. The photo or please. All right. Let me see a little less attitude. Whoa. Is that out? No, that should be good. <laughs> you think you could put a washer and that nut on? Yep. So they gave us this to run all the wires and piping through, but yuck, and you're supposed to just put spray foam around where the wires aren't, but it's a van, and we want to have it as tight and clean and least leak proof as possible. So we got, we're going to go with our aunt, Lance is doing all this, I'm just commentating. We got these little, we call it like a grommet babe, like a yeah. rubber seal. And you can see, it'll just go on there. And we're probably gonna have to drill two holes, but hopefully we can fit them through there rather than this gigantic piece of plastic. I have beer. <laughs> Babe, we're not gonna wanna paint that, right? No, I think we'll just leave this white. You think? I think white's fine. Worst case, we 
We can pay that after. We can pay that after. Don't worry about it. You know what we might do? Ooh, what if for the face of it we get like a cool like stick on like wallpaper or like a cool like here? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So what I did in there is I measured how far from the wall to the center our AC unit is. So that way out here, I make sure I don't drill through and to the back side of that AC unit. We're plenty good here, so we're gonna just probably go straight in line, follow these right up. We have those three meters or like nine point something feet of hosing we need to figure out. I think it would be better for us to have the hose on the inside and then kind of make a cabinet around the hose to hide them as far as like insulation values go. If you ever see the camera like jerk really quick or <laughs> shake or if you hear me blowing behind it, it's because of the flies. They are so bad at this time of day. Um, so yeah, it's basically me just shaking them off of my body every five seconds. If you hear the crows and the roost, the chicken coop is right behind that wall. Right behind. So all the flies hang out in this area because the chickens. Mm -hmm. You can see just in that one little square foot was four flies. And it's like when you walk through the entryway, it's like a wall. It just bzzz. Pretty bad. So for our late night beverages, we have to cover it. It's a Sunday, baby. Baby. The day before Labor Day. Baby. And that's what you do. You work on Labor Day. <laughs> it's about 10 inches away. I'm gonna go double check the inside. I like to double, triple check, especially when I'm drilling. Why <laughs> <Ew. laughs> I have a little something in my throat? Fuck off. Okay. We should be coming through about right there. That's my prediction. Okay. Right on that, right on the center of that. I'm gonna film, and if you're wrong, they'll all see. You are way off. We have these hoses here. Don't believe any refrigerant is in here. However, this makes me think there might be some in here because of these fancy lines. So we're gonna find out. Um, um, no, we're gonna know before you do it what if it gets messed up, right? Find out like you don't know and it might get fucked up. Well, if there no, is. if there's no way, actually, let me re rephrase this. There's no way there's refrigerant in here unless these have like a membrane that you break because it's not like you can unscrew this and quickly screw something in. So on the other ones, there's little valves that we release and that's why we went and got that vacuum pump. Air conditioning units create condensation and that's what this hose is for. So we might have to end up drilling another hole for this hose here. That way we can get the condensation out of the van. Basically we have a radiator in here which is like a bunch of fins that puts liquid through inside this unit. This one's gonna have the cool air and then the hot air will go back out to the outside one, surge air through it and cool itself down and then pump it back into here. So these are going the correct direction is which I was checking. And we're gonna need a, see there's a little like punch out here, this little thingy. So we'll wanna cut out this because we're over here. So we're gonna put the pipe through and then turn it. That's an antique chair right now. I don't need to. This is where you hook into. Yeah, and it does look like they come back from that part we thought. Oh yeah, so you feed them up through there into yep. there. Yeah, perfect. I feel like that side, we should, should cut down this side rather than that side. Classic. Where'd it go? Is it screw rich? Yeah, it's right directly below you. Got it. So this is, so we'll do it red, white, and black. Kind of like red, white, and blue. Now he's drilling the holes for the weebus so and the up. pipes. We'll silicone in here just so that way something can't nest inside. And then I'll probably just zip tie these so they hold nice. Silicone this as well. Now we're putting another grommet in the bottom here. So that way we can put the pipes through and then the Wii Boost wire. And we'll actually have um, the rear brake light wire probably going through there as well. Well, we, we have a rear light here and then a rear brake light because this covers the rear brake light that's attached to this guy back there. Um, so we have actually like a motorcycle one which is pretty cool because it has blinkers and a brake light and it's like a little led strip it, it's cool looking it's good
camera's on the chicken. Yeah, if you guys hear throughout the day or, you know, something along a chicken noise, it's those chickens. Those little stinky, those little stinky butts. So oh, we have two wires here. The short wire goes to this unit so that way they can talk to each other. And then this long wire is going to go to our power. For right now, we're just going to hook it up as like an extension cord. Going to put the grommet in, glue it in, and then we have our copper hose here. And we're going to feed the copper through. Then get the unit up, put the wiring and the plumbing in, and that's pretty much that. Unfortunately, this whole section is going to basically be uh, wiring and plumbing. We we're hoping we could use it as storage, but... I think we'll only have that side of storage. Push a little harder. Oh, she's almost there. Just try to hold it in place better. And the little guy. Did they fit? Mm-hmm. Nice. Right okay, hello. Allie here. Lance is on the other end bending the copper how it needs to go and I'm in here trying to hold it still. That's what it looks like going through and then he also attached like this extension cord piece. Okay. Basically what we're doing is taking these off putting these on here. We shortened it which means I need to flare them out again. So you're gonna just toss these on for now because once we flare we won't be able to so this is called a flare tool you basically clamp one side onto the hose like this and you leave it sticking out a bit what we're gonna do is crush it and it's gonna flare it out so I just literally tighten it so now that can go on there it's flared out and that's how these seal so the, the brass and copper pretty important brass is harder than copper so when you tighten it on that copper actually like squeezes and make it makes an airtight seal so i need Allie to go inside and support the line so that way i can just tighten them on top barking oh really yeah. come inside now do you want to put the mini split up first and then orientate it the next day and the smoke has gotten worse which thankfully Lance and I don't really have any serious respiratory issues but hopefully the AC going in and starting will help filter the air a bit so when we're working in the van it's nicer I'll show you what it says for air quality and healthy last night the copper wires ended up kind of kinking on itself when we were trying to bend it so it's kind of this weird middle ground of bending the nine feet of copper wire and trying to save storage so lance actually ran to the store this morning got new copper piping and hopefully we can get it to bend in a way to where it doesn't kink and doesn't take up too much storage imagine if we charge the system and then it can but yeah usually we can see mountains and hills right there it's, it's gone it's gone, babies. I'm sorry. You and Neil Copper, I think. We were running into a space issue and I went out and bought some more copper because we kinked the other stuff. A little expensive mistake, but oh well. So we annealed that so that way we can tight, uh, wind it up tight just like this one. So this part here is going to the mini split and then this part here is gonna go out to the back AC unit. I have this little like door stopper almost that came in a little kit with like a the flare tool. So basically what it does is you slide it over and it prevents it from kinking. Pretty cool. So now you can kind of bend it and manipulate it and not worry about it kinking because it holds its shape. Two clearing tips. Did you rent this? Just going around working this copper. Getting a little kink in this corner here. So the plan is to put it pretty much like that, right through there. And right here is about where it hooks up behind this unit. And it slots right in this little cubby here. And then what we'll do is, because this obviously copper is very like, lets a lot of heat out. So we want to insulate this real good. So we'll put insulation all around it and probably spray foam all around it and really pack it in. That's pretty nice, huh? So we just need to make bend that tube down quite a bit to angle it downwards and then it'll be good. Take this back out. Back to bending. I'm just pumping a ton of silicone in this corner. 
Um, this is actually how this roof came when uh, I got it out of the junk yard. It was just like someone went crazy with a gun. Just silicone everything like crazy. This is so cool. Yeah, it's actually not that bad, huh? Uh, well, if you could just get with me one of those um, beer hats and put a straw in my mouth. You'll be here all day, huh? All right, so in theory, these shouldn't leak anything out. And if they do, that sucks. Yeah. So it is, why the freak is it doing that? See, I don't understand that. Like, I have to just go quickly over. Yeah. Okay, so that hissing <laughs> sound, I looked up a video and we found out that that's actually just nitrogen in the line and not the actual Freon. Is that it? Yep. It might just have one A or negative 76 CMHG. And this one's reading PSI, right? I have no idea. That, that sounded like foreign language to me. Okay, so we ran the vacuum pump for about 30 minutes, making sure everything was out of the lines. Then we closed off our low side pressure, which is this yellow line, before turning off the vacuum pump. Then we turn off the vacuum pump and then let it sit for about 30 minutes. So what that did is held the pressure in the line and made sure that this hose wasn't leaking here, our vacuum pump hose. So we have the pressure in the line and it's held 27, negative 27, whatever measurement it is in, for about 30 minutes now. So we're going for quite some distance of time just in case there's a teeny little leak and there's none so now what we're gonna do is we still have the gauge all hooked up but we're not pulling vacuum or anything and this little line is actually our high pressure side and so what I'm gonna do is release some freon into the system and watch this needle go up it should be slightly above atmospheric pressure we're gonna let it go in for about five seconds so let's see that go So what I did is I let it go in, tighten it down. We are at about 64. So we're at 64 PSI or whatever it's measuring in. And we're gonna let that sit for about five minutes and make sure no pressure is leaking out of this system now. And once that happens, we loosen it all the way, loosen the bottom, loosen the top, let it go. And then we are set to go into our test mode. So it's been like five minutes a little, I, I'm going a little over what's recommended in the manual, just in case. So now what we're gonna do, we held 74, no movement at all. So we're gonna unhook this hose from here, which uh, might be a little challenging. This is called your service port. It's like a Schrader valve, so it's not gonna change the actual pressure inside, which is great. Good and dandy there. Kind of like a tire when you unhook the, the thingy to do that. Now what we have is we have this cap and this cap. So we're gonna open our low side pressure. So funny enough, the big one is low side pressure. We'll open that all the way and then we'll open our high side. I need to make sure we don't go out too much. Maybe it'll say like uh, only a quarter turn or whatever. I need to figure that out first. So we just open them until they stop. And then we have these little caps that we put on so nothing tampers. And we have caps for the service port as well. So if you were to recharge the system, you'd go through the service port, plugged into our inverter. We'll get the remote. And actually I'm gonna read this real quick. I, I'm very nervous about this system just because if it doesn't work, you're kind of screwed. Knock on wood, babe. So, yeah. Follow me. Let's test this guy. So we're gonna do a little test function here. So this is our first power up. Can we turn that fan off? <laughs> oh, did you hear it? So we have our on mode, on. So we're gonna go mode, cool, and set it as cool as possible. Oh, do you see the little flappy come down? <laughs> yeah. You see that? Oh my God. Okay. It's going. It Richard, did that kick on in the go? back? Is the back fan working? Yes. So I have, this is our app for our solar right now. So we're using 760, 780 watts to start up. So that's our starting power, which is not fair. That's not bad at all. Mm -hmm. Do you feel anything from it yet? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, come up there. <laughs> it feels nice. You can see like 
my hair blowing. It's maybe. really quiet. It is super quiet, which is something we were nervous about because the f all of the system is here above our so, bed. Uh, wait, uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, it said it had to go for five minutes. A swing minutes. mode, though. So swing means it's going to start. This little flap is going to go up and down and swing the air throughout it. Oh, man, that's nice. What's it pulling now? Because it should be pretty. Can you hand me my phone? Yeah. So this is turbo mode. So the fan kicked on a little higher. Does it say on there what temperature it is in here right now? No, I don't see, but it's easily close to 100. So with turbo mode, we're pulling about 1300 watts. So and what battery are we at right now? We're at 54%. Okay. And <laughs> which is insane because we've been running the saw, the welder, grinders, I mean, pretty like gingerly off of our battery system for what, three weeks? With no charging, so that's pretty nuts. It's getting cool in here. I know. It's getting cool. <laughs> it just says lean into me like that. Something super cool about this ACE unit is it's actually like Wi-Fi and Alexa enabled. We plan on having a Wi-Fi system that can be constantly on in here, which means we can hook up Alexa and we can run it off of our phone. If we are out partying, let's say, or out at the beach and the dogs are in here, we just whip out our phone, turn on the AC unit and it'll kick on and cool down the dogs, which is really exciting. And we'll have a camera so we can watch yes. ourselves kick it on and I'm sure the dogs will look up at it and... <laughs> it is so quiet. And on the outside, it's about the same, yeah. same decibel. Um, now we do have this big bundle of copper and this here we're going to have to route outside. This is a condensation line. But this here is super cold, which is probably creating where some temperature is not getting to this, so it might be even colder. And what we're gonna do is just spray foam the crap out of this section. And one, so it holds it so these lines aren't bouncing around. And uh, two, to insulate it and create, uh, to stop the condensation right here. Huge win on the Labor Day, where you put in labor on Labor Day. And again, this is the Senville yes. Lido series. We bought the open box model. It comes with the warranty and it's been great to us so far. It's basically brand new for cheaper. So part of our testing, we're sitting here just living in luxury going crazy, but I actually now need to turn it to heat mode. So we need to test the heat in here for like five minutes. We've been running this AC for like 10 minutes because it's so sweet. <laughs> so let's see here. We're gonna go to mode. So it has a dry mode. We're going to go to heat. So if we're at the beach, we can go to dry mode. And then we actually want to set this to the max setting. And we can turn our turbo mode off. So let's hope that wasn't the system just blowing up. That sounded very scary. It says to test run it. You go from hot, then you turn it to uh, or cold then to heat, max out the heat setting. It sounded like we just like blew something up. How, um, does it feel cold again though? It's not cold yet. It might take a little. It's getting cold again. Oh, I think I held my breath this whole time. That was very nerve wracking because I thought if we just went through all this effort, oh, you can hear it kicking on. To be frank with you, it's been a week since the mini split install and we used it for a few more days, but now it's fall weather. It's actually currently raining. So hopefully we'll have to use the heater soon and we can see our work put to good use, but we've done a lot of other work and we're working on something pretty cool now. And if you want to see that, make sure to subscribe, like, and comment.